right, so we have put the tweed on the board. We've covered the deck in felt. We've put the handles on. There's the underside of the board. We've done our tweed covering. And so now our next steps are to start laying in the electrical harness and all of our inputs and outputs. And then after we get the board connections done, we're going to move on to mounting the power supply up underneath here. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first step here that you see is connecting the top deck to the actual pedal board frame, and this kit comes with several L brackets to do so. Then we move on to putting the cups for the quarter inch electrical connections in and out of the board into the frame, as well as installing the IEC power connector in. Here we see the left side of the board with the power connector and the outputs. This side also has the access port for the keyboard. And now to the right side where we see the inputs. All right, so we now have mounted our cups and our connectors on the outside of the board. So the outside of the board is set. All the connections from now on will be made all electrically relative to inside of the board. Put the harness in, got to figure out if we're going to use the master switch or if we're going to bypass it and get rid of it. We got to figure out if we're going to undermount the amber light in the board, figure out a mounting for that. I drilled holes to allow that. And then we will be routing from there, mounting the power supply and routing things from the input side to the output side. All right, so I just used a little piece of bent steel started off like this. I just made a little mount, not a big deal, put a half inch hole in it, cut it to size. And all I'm going to do is mount it on the bottom side here so that the master switch we can leave on. It's not a big deal. We'll just leave it in the circuit. This is all installation of the power switch itself. This is a custom cut steel bracket that fits that switch in and this is just drilling holes as a pre-guide and then screwing that bracket into place making sure that it's tight enough to survive switching the pedal board on and off many many times perfect not in the way of anything we're going to mount this main switch we'll use a little plate under here to mount it but in the harness it's meant to be mount really, mounted really close um, so what we'll do is we're just going to actually run two jumpers that'll go, and we'll mount it on the back here, but it'll just jump over to this light. We won't have to worry about that, and we will be done with this, with this wiring. Of course, I'll have to cut into here and splice so that I can get a right angle adapter into the back of that power supply. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do, we're going to stick this light basically right in the middle. First thing we're going to have to do is give a little... And this is glued down really well, so I'm not worried about it popping up. But what I will do is take my black Sharpie and color in those sides of the wood, just so that you don't notice the wood color. Let's just color that in. We'll go back to this side. We'll do the same. Okay. Not too shabby. So here you go. Made a little mount out of the out of some plate steel, a real thin plate steel that I found. And that's it, we're just gonna pop this right here and screw this guy in, and that'll be our undermount light. It's supposed to be mounted flush like this. It's actually meant to sit like this on top of the deck, but the problem is, you can see how high that protrudes on that plate, and which would be the pedal deck. It gets right in the way of any pedal, so you either have to carve out real estate to put a master switch and this guy, on top of the deck and you can't put a pedal there or what I've been doing is undermounting them just something like this so I the light if you cover it with a pedal it doesn't matter and the switch you can still turn the board on or off if you want to um, and it remains there functionally but it's not doesn't take up real estate on top of the board let's 
mounted. So that guy's mounted solidly on there. He ain't going anywhere. The best part is that we'll still have this light, but he does not take up. He's flush here. So although he'll be on, he will not take up any room. If we want to cover him with a pedal, we'll do it. Um, but there's your light. Next step is to basically mount the power supply in here. And then he's going to hook up to the rest of the harness. Having done this a few times, I could tell you that these power supplies need to be mounted underneath very securely. What I do is I go grab aluminum or steel bar stock, usually some pretty thin stuff, and I custom bend the bar stock and drill some holes in it to make a custom mount for the power supply so I know that it isn't going anywhere. I wanted to show you this part up close because this is stuck pretty well. It's almost like drum tight, the fabric underneath here. Could flip the board over and, and cut into the fabric that way. It would be easier to cut, but this is going to be easy enough. And it lets me cut in the middle of the channel. So you get a real nice um, look when you're all said and done. So all you do is you just gently, it helps to start with a brand new fresh blade. Just gently and slowly kind of cut your way through that. Obviously be careful if you have any wires hanging out, but that's really it. You finish this off with a little slice on both sides so that any cable ends won't be an issue for you when we go and put cables in here. Once you've cut one of these slits into the board, I mean it's a wash, rinse, repeat process for the rest of these slits, just making sure Obviously not to cut yourself, so be very careful. And then also making sure to cut along the center of these channels and give yourself the extra star-shaped cuts on the end so you can fit the cable connectors through the slots. Wires, but see, you don't, you don't really end up with very noticeable slits. But when you go to push the wires through now, you end up with nice slots and then these crosshairs end up being a spot where you could put and this plug is way too big but you end up with a spot where you could put some larger ends through and then even if we had to put the end through and then slide the cable obviously you end up with a very nice neat looking channel sort of a moment of truth here after all the wiring was done the mains power in right and that's where we are now but you take a cable and plug it into the port if everything worked correctly, even if we have to switch the switch on, we'll test that too. Once I plug this in, it should light up. Ah, success. So that's going to be our light, which no longer gets in the way. If we, put a, if we end up putting a pedal, or even a pedal really close so we can still see it's on, it's not in the way now. It would have been sticking up from the deck a good five-eighths of an inch or so. So let's see. We'll find that switch. Click it off. That's it. Mains power to the board is off. Underneath, click it on. That's it. That whole board can be switched on or off that way. That came out really well. This is just a quick zoom in shot of the power harness underneath the board showing the master switch, how that jumps over to the master light and the power supply underneath. I think this is something interesting worth reinforcing. It's funny, whenever I take somebody else's pedal board apart, it's like almost a guarantee that they've used way too much Velcro to keep the pedals on. I mean, I just lent somebody my King of Tone, and when I got it back, like the whole backside was full of Velcro. I was like, you, you do not need that much Velcro to keep any of these things on. Um, so my next step here is to put the pedals on. I've peeled off all the Velcro that was on anything previously. Um, we're going to start sticking them on, but I'm going to do that in time lapse because otherwise it's going to be 30 minutes of peeling and sticking Velcro. And I'm pretty sure this much Velcro will do every single pedal that we're going to stick on here. So here we go. Peel and stick, 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 peel and stick. But when it's all done, it's really starting to look like a pedal board now.
For the power cables themselves, I'm using the pre-cut supplied nine volt power cable connectors that come with any power supply. I usually have a bunch of them left over from other projects, including what came with the board itself. And this is just a matter of snaking it up in the most efficient way possible, and then using a bunch of standoffs and wire ties in a means to organize the board so I have some main runs of power and it doesn't interfere with anything else. Pedals are on the board. Power is hooked in underneath. <clears throat> we had to do some custom stuff under here. Next is audio. I always do power and then audio. All right, so building your patch cables. I use these current electric kits from Amazon. They're really cheap. I've used them on three or four boards now, and every one of those cables is still going strong. I've used lava tightrope and some other solderless kits. This stuff sounds fine, and, and it really holds up well, so I have no issues. So why spend 10x, basically? All right, this is a solderless kit. What I do is I run the wire through the board from connection to connection. I cut it to size, and I've already done that with this piece for our first cable. And now we'll go ahead and use this kit and build it. What's really important with these is that you get a perfect 90 degree cut. So the cutters they use, they provide, are great. All you do is get a really nice 90 degree cut. And that's it. That's very easy to cut the cable. With the ends they provide, all you have to do is push this in. So I try to straighten it as best I can. Push this in and you'll feel it stop going in and bend this over. Bend this over, you hold a little bit of pressure. You put the cap that they give you, they provide with the kit, cap goes on. The tiny little screw goes in the screw hole. And then all we have to do is tighten that bad boy up. And then it's ready to go. That to bite these threads. That's one side. Now, pretty much wash, rinse, repeat for the other. I've already cut this side, but just for the sake of demonstration, get a real nice 90 degree cut. I'm going to take off barely anything. Looks good. Make sure that's nice and straight. The ends come with their screw already in it. Take that out. Do the same exact operation. I'm going to try to make them to the same orientation, or at least in this case it can be whatever orientation you need. Just keep that straight. Push this end in. Feel it stop. Bend it over. Cap on. Excellent. Cap does have a little bit of resistance because it's just the bent cable. And all we have to do is guide that screw in here. And then use the provided screwdriver. Not saying it's not a little finicky, it's definitely a little finicky, but really easy. Plus, you get used to dealing with the screw and the screwdriver. Okay. And now what I like to do little volt ohm meter. I set it for resistance and all I'm just looking for continuity. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that every cable from ground to ground will be basically no resistance. Nope. And from signal to signal will be basically no resistance. And then what I'll do is I'll wiggle the cable around a little bit and I'll do it again just to make sure that I don't have any loose ends. Nothing. And zero, zero means no resistance, which means there's full continuity in between the connectors and the wire. And that's it. Perfect cable. Now, repeat that for all the cables you may need in your project. For me, the best way to get the actual length of cable that I need is just to snake the cable with no ends through the board roughly following the route I intend on routing the cable, and then I cut it to length and snake it back out and put the connectors on. All right, we just finished assembly on the board. 
And so the underside looks like this. Not bad. The top side looks like that. Pretty clean. It's a good looking board. Here's the top side of the board with all the pedals installed. And then here's the underside of the board with all the cables routed and connected. All right. The client wants a board with a cutout so that he can put the board under the keys. I think we win.